for the top you'll be needing DK weight yarn in two colors a pair of scissors a darning needle and a four millimeter crochet hook you find all the materials in the blog post on coffeeandcrocheting.com The top is crocheted from top down in two pieces, one front and one back piece that are made in the same way. To begin, make a slip knot. And insert your crochet hook in the slip knot. Pull tight. I'll be making a size S and you find all the instructions for the different sizes on the blog post on coffeeandcrocheting.com. Chain 74. Begin row one by making a half double crochet in the third stitch from the hook. That's this one here. To make a half double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook in the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through, all three loops on the hook. Continue to make half double crochets across the row. So you yarn over, insert the hook in the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. You should now have 72 half double crochets. End the row with chaining two and turn. To begin row two, make a half double crochet in the first stitch. And continue to make half double crochet across the row. You should now have 72 stitches and we're ready to begin the lace part. 
So in the end of row two, we cut off our color one. After cutting the yarn in the end of row two, we will attach color two. So we hold it here by the side and then we make our chains with color two. And here we will chain six. pull this a bit tight, holds the chains a bit better, and then we turn. To begin row three, we will make three double crochet clusters in the first stitch here. So we yarn over, insert the hook in our stitch, yarn over, Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two of the loops on the hook, yarn over, insert the hook in our stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two of the loops on the hook, yarn over, insert the hook in our stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two of the loops on the hook. We should now have four loops on the hook. We yarn over and pull through all four loops on the hook. That's our three double crochet cluster stitch. Then we skip three stitches, one, two, three, and make a double crochet in the fourth stitch. And now we will begin the repeat that we will continue to do across the row. So we chain two, skip one stitch and make a single crochet in the second stitch. So insert the hook in the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both of the loops on the hook. Then we chain two. Skip next stitch, make a double crochet in the second. So we yarn over, insert the hook in the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two of the loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two of the loops on the hook. Chain three. And then we'll make a three double crochet cluster stitch in the same stitch as the first double crochet here. And end the repeat with the double crochet in the fourth stitch. So we skip three stitches and then make a double crochet. So the repeat looks like this and we will repeat it across the row until we have four stitches left in the end. I'll show it once more. So we chain two Skip one stitch, 
make a single crochet chain two skip one stitch make a double crochet chain three make a double a three double crochet cluster stitch in the same stitch as the double crochet Skip three stitches and make a double crochet in the fourth. That's again the repeat and continue. Now we have four stitches left of the row. Looks like this the row. So then we chain two, skip one stitch, make a single crochet, chain two, skip one stitch. And then the row with the double crochet. Chain six. So after row three, we turn. For row four, we will continue to make the same pattern repeat, but the difference will be where we place our stitches. But we begin by making a three double crochet cluster, just like we did on row three. So that's made in this first double crochet, or like so which is the last double crochet from the previous row. So we make our three double crochet cluster stitch here. And then we make the double crochet after the cluster stitch just like before. And that's made in the next double crochet, which is this one here. So it's just before the next cluster stitch. So here, and there. So we skip all the stitches until that and make a double crochet in the double crochet from the previous row. Chain two. Make our single crochet in this chain three space from the previous row. So this here we see that we have the three chains. So make a single crochet there. Chain two. And then we make a double crochet in the double crochet. Chain three, and then our three double crochet cluster stitch in the same stitch, so in the same as we did our double crochet. And 
and then we make our double crochet in our double crochet. And that's the end of the repeat, which will be repeated all the way across the row. Chain two. Make a single crochet in the chain three space. Chain two. Make a double crochet in the double crochet. Chain three, double crochet, cluster stitch in the same stitch. So a three double crochet cluster stitch. And then a double crochet in the double crochet. And you'll end the repeat with the double crochet in the double crochet before the final cluster stitch. Then you'll chain two, make a single crochet in this chain six space. chain two and then make a double crochet in the third chain so we need to count this is the third chain we'll make our double crochet there and then we chain six And now we will repeat this row four for five more times for size S. So then you'll have a total of seven lace rows and you can count them by counting the three double crochet cluster stitches. So you, I usually start here at the end and then I know that I have one cluster stitch there and then a second there that's two rows and then I will we'll have one there and a one there so you need to count them diagonally like this but I'll show you when we have our seven rows so meet me back there we have now just completed our seventh lace row and cut off our color too. So I'll first show you how to count the rows so it's easiest to take one of the repeats like this. You see that this is one repeat since it has the lines here from our double crochet. And then we just simply count our cluster stitches. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seventh. So please note that it's for size small, you'll have seven cluster stitches and make seven repeat on your, of your lace. Now we will again go back and make rows of half double crochet. So we take our one 
and make two chains with it. So chain two. Pull tight and turn. Now you'll need to space out the half double crochets in all of these different spaces. So it's important that you get it correct so you again have 72 half double crochets. So to begin our row we make a half double crochet in the double crochet from the previous row. And then we have a chain two space in there we make one half double crochet. After that we have a single crochet where we make a half double crochet. Then again a chain two space, make a half double crochet in. A half double crochet in our double crochet. One half double crochet in our cluster stitch. Then we reach a chain three space. In the chain three space we make two half double crochet. And then we continue like this across. So you make one half double crochet in every stitch you encounter. So in a double crochet, single crochet or cluster stitch. One half double crochet in every chain two space. You reach a chain three space. You make two half double crochet in that. I'll show you again. So we have a double crochet. Make a half double crochet. Then we have a chain two space. Make a half double crochet. Single crochet. One half double crochet. Chain two space. Half double crochet. Double crochet. We make a half double crochet. It's, here it's important to not miss the cluster stitch and make a half double crochet in that. Then we have a chain three space where we make two half double crochet. And continue across the row. When you reach the end of the row, you have your chain six space left, where you make one half double crochet in the chain space, and then one half double crochet in the third chain. You should now have 72 half double crochets across the row. And we chain two and turn and continue to make half double crochet across the row. And we will continue to make these rows of half double crochet until the top is at our preferred length. So we have now made this weather 54 centimeters long and made a lot of HDC rows here and I didn't fasten off after this row because uh, I want to space out single crochets along the edges here to make a nice finishing. If you already fasten off it doesn't matter you can just reattach your yarn here and then start to space out the single crochets. When you now space out the single crochets 
this will then be the front side of the sweater. But the sweater doesn't have a specific front or back side before, so you can choose what side you want to space out the single crochets on to have the most pretty side out. But I continue here where I ended so I don't have to reattach my yarn. So in the end of the row I chained one to have some space to turn and then the row was worked like this. So now I've just turned the sweater to work on the side. And then I just try to find places to space my single crochet. So to make a single crochet, you just insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both of the loop on the hook. Now when spacing out the single crochets, you won't have a specific place to put your hook, but you choose that yourself. What's most important is to not make too few single crochets and not too many. Too few will make it curl like this and too many will make it curl like this. So you just want to have a, a good amount of single crochets and you can always pull back a stitch and change. But since you see here is one row half double crochet and one row half double crochet and I try to put one single crochet per half double crochet row and then I add a bit one extra stitch a bit now and then to even out so it's not too tight. So there I now put one single crochet for this half double crochet row and then I try to put one here for the second single half double crochet row. So I make a single crochet here and then I find that here is the next half double crochet row. So I find a good place to put my single crochet and now I already see that this is quite good space between. It doesn't pull the garment in any direction. It's not too tight and not too, too loose. And then I continue to space out single crochets like this all the way up and then around. But I'll now continue to space them out here and I'll meet you back up here and show you how to space them out when you reach the lace. We've now reached the lace part when we space out our single crochets and I'll show you how to place the single crochets in the lace. It's quite similar to the way we spaced out our half double crochets here. So you just simply have a look at what you have here and, and remember that the stitches will be from the side now. So here we have a double crochet and I know that that's a quite tall stitch so then I put two single crochets in it. So I simply just make two single crochets around, around the stitch like this. And then I reach a chain space, that's one, two chains, so then I know that it's good to put two single crochets around it. So I put one single crochet, and then again insert the hook in the space, and make a second single crochet. And then I find a cluster stitch and put the single crochet in that. Again the chain space where it's two chains so I put two single crochets Chain space, two single crochets. And all the time just remembering to try to get it as even as possible. So if you see, if you put down your garment like this and it lays without pulling it, you know that it's correct amount. And same 
when you have a look at this. As if it just lays flat on the table, you know you have correct amount. So we continue a cluster stitch, put it in there. And a double crochet. We put one single crochet. And then I skip this and put one or two in the chain space. Now I didn't put two single crochets there because it looked quite full after one, so that's enough then. What's most important is that you just follow your same rules. On, since you will be making four of these sides, so you have the same rules on all four sides. Because you will then seam them together and it's a lot easier if it's about the same amount of stitches there. So that they match. Now I look back here where I only put one. And see that it feels a bit tight. So I actually go back and put the second one. Remember that you always can go back and just correct. It's better that you have a nice garment in the end than to not frogging for a few stitches. So now we've reached our half double crochet rows again. So then we continue in the same way as we did, did before on the side. And since we will be doing this all the way around, now when we reach the edge here, we just simply turn the garment. And here we have our chain row, where we chained from the beginning. So here we just simply, here where you see that we have our normal stitches again, so we just simply put one single crochet in every stitch. In the corner here, if you find that it folds too much, you can put one single crochet there and one up here. Then you have a nice corner. Now when I didn't, it's more round. And if you make put one, then it will be more square. Then just continue to do space out your single crochets all the way across here. And then you turn, continue with your lace, and all the way around. Also here on the back, until you're back where you started to put out your single crochets. When we're back at the beginning, after spacing out our single crochets, I simply join to the first single crochet with a slip stitch. So I insert my hook in the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop and pull through the loop, through the loop on the hook. And then I take quite a lot of yarn because I will use this to seam the side. So I take usually quite a lot extra, cut it off. And then pull through. You can also use your fingers. And now I have this to seam the side, which we will continue with next. We have now finished our two pieces. They look the same, so 
here's one piece and then we have another similar piece here and I place one on the t one of the pieces on the table with the back side up you know that that's the back side since you've recently spaced out single crochets and the side where the single crochets look like this is the back side and when they look like this is the front side so we have the back side up on the one on the table and then we put the second similar piece on top so I made sure to always begin my spacing out of single crochets on the same side so then I end on the same side which then when I put it now on the table have the tails on one has it on this side and one on this side so I use them to seam the sides but don't worry if you don't have it like that because you can just reattach a new yarn so then I just place them on top of each other as evenly as possible now they are on top of each other and look even so then I take my measuring tape and measure from here, from the top here and for size S I measure, measure 16 centimeters or in inches that's around 6.2 inches which will then be my sleeve opening so I take a stitch marker and place it here at 16 centimeters in the single crochet that's here and I place it through both of the sides both the front piece and the back piece so they're together like this therefore it's important that you put them even and then I repeat the same on the other side so I measure 16 centimeters and put the stitch mark We will seam the piece using the mattress stitch and here we seam the sides. I usually like to start my seam a bit up here since I have a bit wider hip it's nice when it moves here but if you want you can start here from the, all the way down but since we have our end here but want to start here we need to first get it up there so then I just go here on the back side and simply just we weave here under the single crochet under this V on the single crochet all the way up to where I want to start it's just hiding the tail there and make sure not to pull too tight in the corner so it will be a pretty ending here that waving or sewing the sides isn't everyone's favorite but I still recommend to take your time to make a pretty seam because it's 
a big part of the project and the finished look. As you see now it's nicely hidden here on the inside and the back side. What's more most important when you hide it like this is that you make sure that you don't see it, it hidden on the front side. So now I count that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows here. And make sure that when I start my weaving that I do that on the on the eighth row here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I know that I'll start my weaving here. To see me using the mattress stitch, it's always good that you have stitches like this so you have the loops to go under. So to start the seaming you go under the loop that's closest to your seam. And then I usually start to turn the work like this. So I see both of the edges. And then I go to the next side. Under the loop closest to the edge. Pull through the yarn. And then back on the other side. And then simply continue like this all the way up. And since you go every second like this, it's important that when you've spaced out single crochets that you made about the same amount on each side. It doesn't have to be exact, but about. And then you can always pull it a bit tight, but not too tight because it will curl it. So. And then just continue all the way up. If you want, you can also go through both of the loops. I'll show you how that seam looks. So now I went through both of the loops. And then I here go under both loops. That makes it, now when I went on the one loop, it's like this, that it's wider and both loops closes it more. So it depends on your own preference. And then again, you can just pull it tight. I usually like when I leave it a bit open here before my seaming, then I like to make the first stitches on the inside loop. And then I just continue go through both of the loops. But both are fine, it's just your own preference. But I like since it makes, a fl makes it flat like this, I like to go through the inside loop. Now continue to go on both. And just simply continue to seam like this and pull a bit tight a bit now and then all the way up to your stitch mark. Now we've seamed the sides here and are ready to seam the shoulder part. You'll need to leave an opening like around here for the head and how big of an opening you leave you decide yourself and the pattern have suggestions on how much to leave open. 
I like to have my my opening quite wide. So I'll see mine after that, but please choose yourself how, how wide opening you'll have. And around 20 to 25 centimeters are good for for many. So here we have the top and here we have exact amount, the same amount of stitches on this side and on this side. So now it's important that we double check that we put our stitch marker on the same place here and here. So I have 72 stitches which is 47 and a half centimeters wide. So if I want to leave an opening around 20, 25 centimeters, I'll need to leave 36 stitches in the middle. So I simply just half that, which will then leave me with 18 stitches on each side. So I then just count 18 stitches from here. And that's there. here. I mark them with stitch marker. Same on the other side. And then I usually put stitch markers again in the corners here. You can try on your sweater to see if this is a good opening and adjust the stitch markers accordingly. So put your stitch markers here and try on your sweater so you see the neck opening, if it's a good width or not. And then just simply seam from here to here using the mattress stitch and same on the other side. When you've done that, we will add sleeves. To make sleeves on your top, you need to space out half double crochets along the arm opening. So we take our crochet hook and yarn, attach the yarn with the slip knot on the crochet hook and then since we spaced out single crochets here we already have the stitches ready to space out our half double crochet for the sleeves so we open up our armhole and turn it like this and attach our yarn here in the bottom of the arm opening. So put in your crochet hook in one stitch, pull up a loop, pull through the loop, through the loop on the hook. And then chain one. And then you just continue to make one half double crochet in every stitch around. How many stitches you have will depend on how many single crochets you made around the arm opening. So I counted that I have 59 single crochets around my arm opening. And for my measurements, I should have 54. And I would solve that by making some half double crochets together on some of the rows for my sleeve. But we begin with one half double crochet in every stitch around. Now we're reaching the end of the round. It's important that I end on the correct place. So I see here that I attached my yarn in this stitch. 
So I've already made that stitch, so I will not place a half double crochet in it. So that will be the final half double crochet. And then I simply go under the first stitch of the round and make a slip stitch. So I yarn over, pull through a loop and pull the loop through the loop on the hook. And then I chain one and turn my work. And now since I had some extra stitches I will start the round by making half double crochet two together. In the beginning of the round, when you crochet in the round like this, it's important that you put the first stitch in the correct place, and that's this here, that's the first stitch. So to make the half double crochet two together, I yarn over, insert my hook in the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert my hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull through all four loops on the hook. And then I continue the round until I have two stitches left of the round, where I again will make half double crochet two together. Now we have two stitch left of the round. Remember that this stitch here where I have my thumb is the first stitch of the round. So you see that since it's connected here. So now I end the round with half double crochet two together. And then I join by making a slip stitch in the first stitch of the round. And chain one and turn. So I now work on the inside of the sleeve again. I'm now going to make a round of only half double crochet so I won't make any half double crochet two together. Those rounds when you make half double crochet two together are called the crease rows or the crease rounds. And you can add as many as you want so that you get a f good fit for your sleeve. Every decrease round decreases the stitch count with two stitches. So since I started with 59 stitches and for my gauge I will need 54 stitches. I will add a couple of decrease rounds but I will also try, try on the T to see that I get a good fit for my my arm and I recommend that you do the same. But continue now to make rounds of half double crochets around or decrease rounds for a total of 9 to 10 rounds. <laughs> Now we've reached the end of row 9, which is an inside row or wrong side. And I'll join to the first stitch of the round with a slip stitch, chain 1 and turn. And now we're on the right side round and I'll make single crochets around to make a nice border on my sleeve. So you can make 
as many rounds as you want, but make sure to end on a wrong side round so that you then get your single crochets on the right side. You just simply make one single crochet in each stitch around. The single crochet around you end in the same way that you join to the first single crochet of the round with a slip stitch and then I pull the yarn and then cut it off here. And I'm ready to weave in the end here and I have a sleeve on my top and then you just repeat the same on this other side and then you're finished with your top. Enjoy your finished summer haze top. I'm Amelia. You find me at coffeeandcrocheting.com on inst at coffeeandcrocheting.com or on Instagram at coffeeandcrocheting. Come meet me there because I'd love to say hi.